Exercise 12. In this exercise, we're going to take a look at the capabilities inside Pro Engineer and how they could actually, how could you use Pro Engineer to import a DXF or DWG file from AutoCAD or another legacy CAD system. To begin, in the manual on page 9, we start the exercise. And here we could see that you just go to File, Open, and select the DWG file from the options. Now, you got to be careful though. Uh, in the manual, it shows here that it shows up with um, lowercase and under Exercise 12. Uh, I discovered that on my home computer, I had difficulty actually trying to open up that file simply because it actually um, does not like the space uh, as a character. So, and lowercase sometimes it doesn't like either. So what I ended up doing was going back into my, through Microsoft Explorer and changing that all to caps and taking out the space or put an underscore instead of a space. Well, let's begin. So with Pro Engineer open, we now go to File Open and bring up this dialog box. Over here, under where it says pro type, it says Pro Engineer file, but we want to find DWG, which is the native AutoCAD file. So .DWG, and then locate your folder, the CAD 111 Advanced. Under Sample Files, Exercise 12, you will find the Exercise 12.DWG. Go ahead, select it, and open it and it will prompt you to import it. Now, you can import it into another drawing. Uh, that would, that's very useful. Actually, you can import it as a format if you have old legacy DWG formats that you might want to bring in. Uh, in this case, we're going to bring it into a part file because we want to create a three-dimensional model from our 2D drawing. So we select part and hit OK. Now, it comes in, as you see here, and what we want to do is um, we actually want to clean it up a little bit. We don't need to have all this data on here or information. So if we go to show from the upper left above our feature tree, we could select layer tree. And you could actually uh, right click on any of these layers, like in this case the yellow, which is the crosshatch, and hide it. Let's hide the magenta as well, which was that uh, center line in there. And then the C in, which is the border. And that leaves us just with the geometry that we need. The next thing we can do is let's zoom up here. And we need to start generating uh, planes, because we don't have any planes here to work with. And we want to generate uh, at least three that we could use as references and also sketch on. So if you're looking in your manual, we start off and we go ahead and we select some geometry to create planes and generally what you could create planes perpendicular to lines and curves um, by selecting points and lines so what we're going to do here is we'll go ahead and we'll select this line here and this endpoint inside pro -E. so let's zoom up there hold the control key as you do this you might have to click a couple times Actually, before you hold control, it's actually easier just to select the line and then hold control again and select the endpoint. Or, better yet, select the center point there and then hold control and then select the line it's attached to. Now, if we go over here to the plane tool, you'll see it will generate a plane centered there. Hit OK. The next one we'll select, uh, we'll go ahead and select the line here, and then hold control and select the endpoint on this corner here, and then go to plane. And that will generate a plane that's parallel to the imported geometry. It's actually in alignment with. And then finally, we could go ahead and select this point here and then this line. 
holding control. Oh, yeah, actually, uh, cancel that. Let's take a look at the manual here. What we do, we end up um, trying to create a plane through here, so we're going to go ahead and select. Okay, so we'll end up selecting this line right here, and then hold control again and select the end point of it. And go to plane, and that will generate our third plane. And so we should see kind of like a front, top, and right plane that we have created. Uh, over in show, we could actually go to model tree now. We could see datum one, two, and three, and datum. In this case, date my datum two is my uh, front view. Or actually, it would be my top. And this would be datum one is my right. Datum three is my front. Okay. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and start a sketch on the plane parallel aligned to the, our actual uh, imported geometry. So that means that would be this datum 2 in my case. Just make sure it's this one right here. And start a sketch. And we're going to steal this geometry for our new sketch. And first of all, though, the one thing it's prompting us for is an alignment. So when we go over here to the references, we could go ahead and select these vertical and horizontal lines. And then hit close. OK. Now we're going to use the Use tool over here on the right. Click on Use, and under Type it's going to be Loop, and then just select one of these edges. And you can hit Close, and you can just hit Done at this point. Now use the Revolve tool, and go ahead and select this edge as an axis here and it will revolve around that geometry. And hit the Done tool. And now we have our wheel nearly done. Now we need to steal the holes or the slots that we have here. And we'll just take one and we'll pattern it. So this gets a little bit more tricky because it's not on the same plane. So we need to get some of that geometry over here to the right datum plane. So the way we do that is we go ahead and we need to first of all create a datum plane that's centered on uh, it within this wheel. And if we uh, let's take a look here, and actually we do have uh, one centered already. So um, actually skip that part of the manual. It's only if you if we didn't center it in the beginning. Oh no, I'm sorry. Uh, actually, that is correct. We do want that there. So we'll go ahead and create a sketch on this plane here, this, uh, the one that runs parallel with our geometry. Hit sketch and select these as a references. Okay. And then take the line tool and in the center here, if you go to wireframe, you can maybe see a little bit better in the center. Just draw a little line, approximately half inch long. That's fine. And then just make sure that it was uh, snapped into the geometry that you made reference to. And hit done. Okay, now what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and create a plane that runs right through the center there. Okay, now to get that plane aligned in the center. Again, the geometry that we just sketched, we could go ahead and we could select the end point of it, and then hold control and select the line itself, then go to datum. And this should create a datum. As you can see, it's offset a little bit from the first one we created. 
but now it's centered and we have references that we could lock into when we drop the geometry on this plane. Okay, so let's start a sketch again on the parallel plane, in my case datum 2, and then zoom up over here. Uh, select your references as the geometry there. And then go back to the Use tool. Select Loop. Select one of these inside edges. And hit the middle mouse button a couple times to exit. And then hit Done. Now you'll see if you've turned on the Show tool for Layer Tree, you will see Sketch 3 now contains the geometry that we need to move over to our right plane. So what you want to do is click on something else other than Sketch 3, then re-click on Sketch 3 just to reset it, make sure that you have it selected. So, um, now, once it's selected or highlighted like you see here, now we could go to Edit, Copy. Now select the plane that you want to drop it on, in this case the right plane, and go to Edit, Paste. You'll get the Sketch option, hit Sketch, and now you could kind of locate it by moving it. You'll actually see a, a light red line or geometry here. And if you look hard enough, you can see the actual center point uh, down below it moving. Now when you get that center point somewhat aligned to the center where those two intersecting planes are in the center of the wheel, you know you're pretty close and you can just click to drop the geometry. And now it's going to ask for some references and now this is where you have those two references, those planes that are centered that you could select and then hit close. Now the first thing you want to do with this geometry, and again I'm in wireframe just because it's a little easier to see, is you want to make sure that there's tangent relations on all these points. And right here there's one missing. So go to the relationship tool, uh, actually constraint, and make sure tangent is selected and select these two entities until you get the T that appears there. T should be on all four of those points. And then hit close. The next thing you want to do is go to the dimension tool and redimension all these. These are all weak dimensions. We want to go ahead and click on them, the middle click, and leave them as is, for the most part, for these arcs but then you'll see you have a distance between these two. Make sure you click between those two dots and then go up here somewhere and middle click to drop the dimension. Leave it at 1.34. Okay. And make sure you go to the drawing here actually that um, on, the page, on page 19 section 21 and make sure you replicate all these dimensions. See we have 1.75 distance from the largest center point of the arc, largest arc center point to the intersection or up to actually up to that uh, plane there that we have as a reference and then everything else is set to zero or you could actually add a relationship instead. So as long as we're, as long as we're in dimensions still we could go ahead and click on that large arc center point and then this plane here, actually the reference, and the middle click over here should be 1.75. So you could double click on that after you escape out of the option 1.75. Type in. And you'll see some zeros here. You could either make sure they're zeros, like in this case I have 0 point, or point 0 0.01. You could set to just point 0.0 for both of those and make them hard dimensions. Or you could actually just establish a relationship over here using the constraint tool. Go, go, go to constraint and the one that looks like an eyeball which is coincidence. Select the center point of the sketch and the horizontal line and then select the center point of the sketch and the vertical line and then it eliminates the need to have zeros and to lock it down. Now you know you're centered. Hit close and now we could shade this and we can see our features in the center, or it's locked in at least. Now we're going to go ahead and hit Done, and we'll just extrude that and remove material in the process. So we'll go to Extrude, 
we'll select mid plane make sure it's at least five inches and then select the remove tool hit done also make sure that your axis is turned on over here the axis tool because we're going to go ahead and rotate this around the axis uh, with the pattern so as long as you select the feature so it highlights either select it from the tree as extrude one or the actual geometry now you could go to the feature tool right over here on the right hand side select that and where it says dimension make sure you find axis select the axis for the pattern to go around and then you're gonna have five instances and you could type in 360 divided by 5 and hit enter give you 72 degrees and hit the green check mark to apply now you have the slots now you just have to put the radii in so go to the rounds and the rounds should be 0.125 and just select all the edges make sure you get the bottom side too if you need to rotate it around and the preview should give you a glimpse of what it's going to look like once it's done and hit apply and you can turn off your planes and axes and origins and if you want, you could even hide that sketch or sketches. Okay, and there you have it. You have your 3D model created from a 2D imported AutoCAD drawing.